Hey, welcome back to Grandma's Corner 2020. I'm so glad that you're here to hear another great story. But I have to show you, look at my friends. Oh my gosh, I have had some of these stuffed animals since I was a little girl. Let me introduce you to my friends. This is Judy, and Judy is about 60 years old. This is Karen, and Karen is probably 55 years old. And this is a tiger that I got from a beloved uncle many years ago when I was young. So it's probably pushing 55 years old too. So they wanted to join in on the fun. So I said, sure, why not? Bring your friends, bring your family. And so now we have even more guests. So today we're going to read a story called Spiders. Who doesn't like spiders? You know, spiders are in the arachnid group. So this is a story by Gail Gibbons. So thank you, Gail Gibbons. Spiders. By Gail Gibbons. Here we go. Spiders may look scary, but most of them don't hurt people. There are about 30,000 different kinds of spiders. I think I'm going to have to put my cheaters on, folks. Oh, there you are. The price you pay for getting older. All right. Spiders come in many shapes and sizes. Some are so tiny they are no bigger than a speck of dust. Others can be as big as a dinner plate. Oh my, imagine that. Most spiders are brown, gray, or black. Some have bright colors too. So that would be the one as big as your dinner plate. That would be a tarantula. The first spiders lived about 300 million years ago, even before dinosaurs roamed the earth. Spiders belong to a group of animals called arachnids. The word arachnid comes from an old Greek legend. Once there was a woman named Arachne who was very angry when she lost a weaving contest against the golden goddess Athena. When Arachne died, Athena turned Arachne's body into a spider so she could weave forever. Well, that's a pretty cool myth. All right. Do you remember that other video that I made, the difference between spiders or arachnids and insects? Well, here we go. Here's another refresher course. Here is a picture of a spider's body. And I'm going to open the page this way. So you can see that a spider has eight legs, two body parts. You've got this one up here that's called the cephalothorax. That includes the head and where all the moving parts are attached. And then you have the abdomen. Then an insect's body has three body parts. You've got the head, thorax, and the abdomen. A lot of insects have wings. They have six legs, as opposed to a spider that will have eight legs. Spiders are not insects. Their bodies are different from insects in many ways. A male spider is smaller than a female spider. When a male spider finds a mate, he has to be super careful. If the female spider is hungry, she might eat him. Some male spiders do a dance or bring an insect to attract a female. A mother spider lays her eggs and encloses them in a strong silk egg sac. Some spiders lay a few eggs, others lay thousands. After a number of weeks, the baby spiders creep out of the silk sack. Spider babies are called spiderlings.
Most spider mothers don't stay with their babies. Some spider lynx care for themselves as soon as they are born. They run up to the highest places they can find. The spider lynx spin out long streamers of silk. A breeze lifts them and carries them to their new homes. This way of travel is called ballooning. Well, wouldn't that be fun? As a spiderling grows, its hard outer skin, called an exoskeleton, becomes tight. The skin cracks open along its back. The spider sheds it by climbing out. This is called molting. Most spiders molt five to ten times. Okay. Some spiders are web weavers. They spin webs to catch their food. There are spiders that weave tangled webs. The spider spins a tangled mass of silk, and when an insect is trapped, the spider must run out and get it. Doesn't that look like a big tangled mess? Other spiders weave sheet webs. The spider hangs upside down beneath the web. When the insect hits the sheet web, the spider quickly pulls it through the webbing. Spiders are very, very crafty. All right, this one's called a grass spider and it spins a funnel web. Spiders create funnel webs too. The top is big and the bottom is small. The web is held in place by lines of silk. The spider sits at the bottom and waits for an insect to fly or walk in. Some spiders spin triangular webs. The triangle web is fastened at three points. The web's bands of dry and sticky silk stop the insects. First, the spider spins a few lines of silk to hold up the web. Then it adds lines of silk that look like the spokes of a wheel. You see how they cross? Around and around the spider goes, adding a sticky coil to the spokes. Next, the spider waits for its meal in the center of the web or nearby. The orb-weaving spider spins a pattern of many circles. This is one of the most popular spider webs, orb weavers. When an insect lands on the web, the web shakes. Ah! That's kind of like a dinner bell saying, hey, dinner's ready. Well, for the orb weaver, the web shakes. Instantly, the spider pounces. It wraps the insect in silk. Then it stuns the insect web with its poisonous fangs. And this is a garden spider. If the spider is hungry, it will eat the insect right away. If not, it will wait until later. The most beautiful spider web of all is the orb web. Not all spiders use webs for catching food. Some hide in burrows or beneath rocks or stones. When the spider sees an insect, it quickly runs out and grabs it. One unusual kind of spider lives under the water. It weaves a bell-shaped web. Then it fills the web with tiny bubbles. The spider stays there, breathing the air from the bubbles and wants waits to catch water insects. Well, wouldn't that be like somebody scuba diving, wearing all that gear to breathe underwater? Well, that's kind of what this spider does. It takes air underneath its web. How cool is that? Here is the trapdoor spider. Another type of spider digs a tunnel and lines it with silk. To protect itself, it makes a hinged trap door from dirt and silk to cover the tunnel. When the spider is hungry, it opens the door a bit. If an insect comes close, the spider scurries out to catch it. Some spiders hide on or inside flowers. 
Can you see that one? That one's so camouflaged, you can hardly see it. One spider even changes color from yellow to white to match the color of the flower. When an insect lands, the spider snatches it. All right, folks, here's your black widow. Some spiders are dangerous. One of them is the black widow spider. The black widow spider bites only when its web is disturbed or it is in danger. The poison of a black spider widow, black widow spider, whoopsie, can kill a person. So you do not want to mess around with these. Now, how do you know that this is a black widow? Underneath the abdomen, if the uh, spider happens to be on a web and you can see underneath it, it will have an hourglass shape of red. Now, an hourglass shape is like taking two triangles and connecting them at a point. And that is an indication that says, do not bother me, I am poisonous. Black widows, do not catch them. Ah, oh, there's your tarantula. The biggest spider of all is the tarantula. When its legs are stretched out, it can measure about 10 inches wide. That's about as big as a dinner plate. It is very hairy. Tarantulas that live here in the United States are not poisonous to people. Spiders have enemies. Some insects, like spider wasps, hunt and eat spiders. Toads, frogs, and some birds like to eat spiders too. Most spiders live for about one year. Some live much longer. Female tarantulas sometimes live to be 25 years old. So tarantulas actually can be pets. They're obviously best in nature, but if you were to have an insect or an arachnid as a pet, just know that tarantulas do live a long time. Many people don't like spiders because they are afraid of them, but spiders help us. They play an important role by eating many insects that are harmful to crops and people. Spiders can be interesting to watch. Scientists are still discovering new kinds of spiders and learning more about them. And that's our story about spiders. How cool was that? I bet you learned a few things. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for subscribing. And we're going to go to bed now because you know what? It's that time again. Grandma's in her nighttime gear, and these guys are all tired, and we're ready to hit the hay. So you have a good evening, and I'll catch you next time, because we're going to read the Icky Bug Alphabet Book. Get excited! Ta-ta!